Good evening, everybody. My name is Monica Schalfi, and I'm chair of the Department of Women's Studies. I'd like to start, perhaps, by asking if some of you would like to share your impressions or your feelings or your thoughts or comments. Uh, maybe you want to add to what you've seen or correct something you have seen, so maybe we can start with that. I'll just walk around and give you the mic so everybody can hear you. Culture, women have a very hard time, even if they aren't have acid thrown on them. Their lives are not very rich because they are completely controlled by others. Okay, so um, here's the, you, you were sort of amplifying things. This is not just a question of, of the horrific violence with acid um, being thrown on faces, but your impression, what, your, what you took from the film, this is a culture that's extremely oppressive to women across the board, independent of sort of domestic, because I think this is what we're seeing as domestic violence, right? This is what we would call in general terms domestic violence in a very extreme form. Uh, anyone from the audience who wants to, who wants to comment on, on this? Mm -hmm. I just want to remind you that there are a lot of passive voices. And Pakistan is one of the countries <coughs> where they have people who come out with the guts and courage and bring this out in the open. You must have heard about a lady, her name was Muhtara Mai, and she lived in a small village and she came out and took on the powerful tribe. You will not hear such things coming out from the Middle East. You will not see such things coming out from Africa. So the violence is there. Here is my sister visiting from Pakistan. She is a principal of a women college. So do not try to think that every woman is oppressed. However, we have a very strong independence strike and you will not find such stories coming out open like this movie. Um, if I may just follow up on that, I think what we know from research that domestic violence is a universal phenomenon. It happens in every single country, it happens in every community. It's not specific to Pakistan or to the US or Germany, which is my where the country I'm from originally, it happens worldwide. I think that's something, that's a premise which we need to have when we want to discuss the movie. In the whole movie, how these idiots, they were getting hold of ASAP. It's just like leaving the guns with the little children. So Pakistani government has to lock these assets forever and whoever some of these idiots should be punished with them. It's more of a question. I don't know if anyone knows whether it has been a deterrent since the law has been passed. Have there been less frequent cases of obvious? Someone in concert with that, I, I'm wondering if uh, it's difficult, if, how the burden of proof issue works. Uh, for a woman who would say, yes, he's done this, and for her husband to say, oh, no, I didn't do it. Somebody else did it. How is that playing out in the courts? One of the biggest reasons we need to stop corrupt system in Pakistan. There is a law, there is a parliament, there is a politician, there is a everything, but there is no system. This is the only reason is corrupt. So we can bring the change, we can bring some positive things, just like Dr. Javid is from London, he came to Pakistan and Karachi, help those people. So there must be something we can do, and there's also, uh, just, that's my opinion, the system and corruption, that's all. Um, and I think the film makes a very strong appeal, particularly when Dr. Javid has joined the party, we need to do something about it. I think this is a film that makes an appeal to us as audience. Look, you can bring about change, but you need to get active. It's not only we can claim that this is the corrupt system, there is a, some other reason behind it, is it, which we cannot blame totally on the corrupt system or anything. I think this is illiteracy which is behind that. We have to educate those people what they are doing. They are not supposed to do that. And they have to be 
let them know that this is not only because the women is weak and we should take the advantage of that as a matter of fact. Situations occur during in, um, arranged marriages. Um, I'm just wondering if that's a factor maybe in this and that maybe if that, a lot of them were arranged marriages. I guess they were due to, um, you know, to a situation in which there wasn't a really good basis for love to begin with. Okay. I don't know. Personally, having spent time in Pakistan myself, I would say maybe 98% are arranged marriages. I don't think it has anything to do with arranged marriages. Uh, look at the tremendous domestic violence in the United States, the number of women who are murdered every year, or badly dated boyfriends. That's not arranged. That would just be an excuse not to get to the real cause. Uh, I, my, my husband is originally from Pakistan, so I feel like I have a familiarity with the culture and also arranged marriages versus non-arranged marriages. Um, I agree with Kathleen's point of view. What we are seeing is domestic violence. We are seeing crimes. These crimes should not happen independent of what the marriage system is, what the arrangement is. Uh, I think each marriage system poses its own challenges, its own um, advantages and disadvantages. And I think what we, um, and this is a whole new discussion, and, and ex leads us to, to, you know, be One thing that I noticed at the very beginning was, was it Zakaya's husband that was, was in jail? And um, when he was asked about his wife, she was a piece of property to him. She, it wasn't, it was like, she's my wife, I can do whatever I want with her. Um, and that was an interesting mindset as well. And one thing that we brought up at the earlier um, screening um, was the fact that it wasn't just her husband, it was her sister-in-law and her mother-in-law. And it, it was kind of interesting that these two women, they didn't feel any sense of retribution might happen to them. I, I, I wondered why they just pitched in with this and, and thought that he couldn't turn around and do the same thing to them. On, on a similar note, I was wondering, uh, it's, it's clear that a lot of this issue is a male-dominant society, but where are the fathers and brothers of the victims and what role do they play in this? Do they have a say or is it that once their marriage is arranged, they've lost any voice in this, and this is just my lack of familiarity with the, cu with the culture, but I'm, I'm just wondering that, you know. Sure. Talk a little bit more about what's happening here in the States, how this is transferring. I have very good friends, many, many people that I know in New York and in Upper Darby and um, Philadelphia area, and that area, Montgomery County, over the last two years has implemented a direct outreach program going to the homes of women, uh, you know, to try and get to the women when the men are not there. And they're having programs demanding that the women come without the men. And they've had a very, very hard time implementing this and having the women feel safe coming to that and telling them, these are your rights in America. This is a human rights issue. I am, you know, just getting getting them to come out of their houses is very difficult. They feel very controlled I, I'm very from whatever aspect that is. And, you know, my mother was abused, so I'm not coming at this from a cultural perspective. I'm just saying she felt very dominated by her husband. I just wanted to be clear that when I'm bringing that up, I'm saying the effort in Montgomery County is definitely to the Sikh and Pakistani community. They're trying to go into their homes specifically. Although, you know, it is a nationwide, worldwide issue. I mean, this was something that they identified that these women just definitely had no clue what their rights were and were being told by their husbands that they had no rights here. And I think that we as, as American citizens should realize that some of those laws that were in place maybe in the late 80s, I mean, if you call the police on your husband or spouse, they never even responded. Um, the police department did not think it was really important. So a lot of the issues that we're talking about now in other countries affected the United States as well. So again, it really goes back to domestic violence. When we have a point, or I think a point should be made that in the United States now we have laws in place that 
um, if you call the police department and you're threatened by your spouse, the government will come in and also press charges. Because what was happening, and I don't know if anybody's here from the family court system or the um, court system at all, but what was happening here in the United States was um, you would call the police and then you would be threatened or you'd change your mind. And they put it into place that probably in the early 90s that you, whether you changed your mind or not, the state would press charges. So that really, I think, helped some of the domestic violence here in the United States. It's only been in the relatively recent past that I think we, um, that, our, that we in general have become more and more aware of how much this goes on in our, our country. And I was wondering how much awareness there is in, in general in um, Pakistan now. Uh, let me address this issue. You will be surprised that in the United States, you have one talk show one Sunday talk uh, dedicated for talk shows. In Pakistan, there are about, the, about 20 talk shows every day dealing with every issue. I think at this time in history, Pakistan probably has the most independent press in the whole world. So every issue is discussed and the society is under transformation. In respect to the religion of Islam, uh, what is in the Quran, the Holy Scripture, it says very clearly that a woman should not bear all that abuse. So if that abuse happens the first time, she can leave. She has the right to leave. She has the part, you know, she can. Uh, she has the right to file for divorce, or however the case may be. But certainly, it does not seem rational to go through all that abuse and then go through you know, the acid and all that. Certainly she went through a lot of abuse before all of this happened. Mm -hmm. and, and as a woman, and as a Pakistani woman, I can say that we should not, the religion does not obligate us to be submissive enough to bear all those kinds of abuses. And the, the second comment that I had was, what is happening with the children of these, um, these survivors of acid, you know? it's the abuse that they go through, what kinds of things that are, are they going through is, is my major major question or my major challenge because I am an educator and I'm a principal of a school here. And, and these domestic violence issues go on with everybody in the U.S. as well. And I've seen that I've represented them in courts. I've been to courts. All these things have happened. But what is it that we are really doing to educate those, to bring, those, bring back those family values that were there before? The real issue is violence against women in every shape and form. I, I think that is, is and it, it's, it's a universal issue. And how do we stop behaving toward, how do we stop this, these crimes?